Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I am Hashim Ali Khan. So this is the continuation of the last video, sampling theory. In the last video, I have explained you about the basics of sampling, sampling procedure, parameter and statistic, different methods of samples, and lastly, <clears throat> determination of sample size. These are the topics already I have covered in the last video. Now in this video, further I am going to discuss about the sampling. That is what is sampling distribution? What is standard error? Then statistical inferences, that is point estimation and interval estimation. Next I am going to discuss about uh, the properties of good estimator. And lastly, hypothesis testing or level of significance level of significance. So these are the topics I'm going to cover up in this video. In examination, very frequently the theory will be asked regarding what is standard error, what is uh, the statist uh, sampling distribution, and what is hypothesis testing, what is level of significance. These are the different theory questions which are asked frequently in examination. So watch the video till the end, take a screenshot of the points which I've written on the board, then I'll explain each and every point in detail. Ah, so previous video I have explained you about the meaning of the term sampling. The statistical data can be collected either by complete enumeration or by samples. When each and every item of the population is considered, it is called census. And when a part of the whole population is considered and studied to give the opinion about the population, it is called sampling. So there are many advantages of sampling. We take a number of decisions on the basis of sampling. So last video I have explained you in detail. Now I am going to discuss about sampling distribution. We have taken samples of a fixed size, of a given size. Samples of a given size may be drawn from the population. A number of samples are drawn. For example, in a business organization which produces a product. In continuity it is produ producing the product. So the manufacturer is taking a sample of 10 items every hour. The first sample 10 items, second sample 10 items, third sample 10 items. Like that a number of samples are taken of a given size from the given population. And we, uh, we have written all these samples in a table. And that table will be called sampling distribution. That means samples are drawn of a fixed size from a given population periodically and all the data are collected and drawn in a distribution that distribution is called sampling distribution now standard error the sampling distribution will have its own mean and standard deviation when we have made a sampling distribution taken sample at different point of time and we have made a table so for this sampling distribution we can calculate the mean and standard deviation of this sampling distribution. Example 10 samples are drawn. Each sample consists of 10 items. The first sample 10 items, second sample 10 items, third sample 10 items like the 10 samples we have taken. And we have recorded all the values, mean values of the 10 samples. Now this sampling distribution we can calculate the mean and standard deviation of this sampling distribution. So when we calculate the standard deviation of sampling distribution, it is called standard error. In simple words, standard error is the standard is the standard deviation SD of the sampling distribution of the sampling distribution. So the standard deviation calculated from sampling distribution of statistics is called standard error. Now standard error measures the dispersion of all possible values of the statistic in repeated samples from the given population. How the individual statistic are changing, that means dispersed from the average, from the average. 
that is called standard error it is used to set up confidence limit why this standard error is calculated to make confidence limit that means the upper limit and lower limit within which the population parameter will lie in case of estimation problems we don't have any information about the population so we want to find out the information of the population by studying the sample so in this sample we make lower limit and upper limit within which the population parameter will lie so to make this confidence limit we require standard error and standard error is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution that's it so this is the end of standard error now statistical inference inference means conclusion <clears throat> when we make sampling study we come to some generalization or inference the, there is objective of making the sampling study no? we, we conduct the sampling study to come to some generalization to come to some conclusion so what type of uh, I mean generalization will make the theory of statistical inference consists of those methods by which one makes inferences or generalization about population based on information provided by samples from the information provided by samples we are making some inferences about the population so there are two methods first is we have no information at all about the population characteristics of population this is called population estimation that means two types of problems are there in sampling the first problem is we don't have any information about population we want to find out the characteristics of the population by studying the sample these are called estimation problem we are estimating the characteristic of the population secondly some information of population parameter may be available and it is required to test how far the hypothesis is tenable in the light of information provided by some that means second type of problems are we have the information about population now we want to test whether the information about the population is true or not by taking a sample for example a supplier has uh, given the I mean conclusion that whatever I supply the goods to you only 5% are defective not more than 5% this is the contention given by the supplier now we want to prove whether contention of the supplier is true or not so we have taken a sample and we want to study whether it is exactly 5% or below or more than 5% whether the supplier's contention is true or not <clears throat> this type of problems are called hypothesis problem or test of significance problem the first type of problem we don't have any information about population we want to find out the information of population by studying the sample and this is called estimation problem second type of problem we have the information about population now we want to confirm whether population information is true or not so this we can do by taking a sample studying a sample finding out whatever sample says is true about population or not it is called hypothesis testing now statistical estimation one by one we'll study the first problem is estimation problem estimation problems are those problems where we don't have information about population and we want to find out the information about population by studying the sample and again this estimation are of two types point estimation and interval estimation point estimation means specifically we are finding out a single value of population parameter single value of population parameter from the study of the sample by studying the sample we are giving only a single value of the population parameter that is called point estimation interval estimation we will make an upper and lower limit within which the population parameter will lie example by studying the sample we have given the limits lower limit and upper limit suppose the lower limit is 5 upper limit is 8 so we have given the range from 5 to 8 now we can conclude that population parameter will lie between 5 to 8 it is called interval estimation 
So these are the two types of estimation. Now properties of good estimator. When we make an estimation, there should be some properties of good estimator. The properties are it should be consistent. So whatever estimation we have done, that estimator should be consistent. Secondly, unbiasedness. There should not be any bias in calculating the estimator. Thirdly, efficiency and sufficiency. These are the properties of a good estimator. The next one is hypothesis testing or significance testing. Two types of problems, estimation problems and hypothesis testing. Estimation problems we have seen. Don't have any information about population. Finding out the information about population by studying the sample. Secondly, hypothesis testing means we have the information about population. We want to confirm whether population information is true or not. This we can test by conducting a sample study. We'll select a sample, study the sample and give the opinion whether population parameter is correct or not. So one objective of sampling theory is hypothesis testing. Now hypothesis testing begins by making an assumption about a population parameter. Actually meaning of hypothesis is making an assumption of population parameter. We don't have the information but we are assuming that the population parameter is so and so. That assumption is called hypothesis. And then we gather sample data to determine whether sample statistic to test the validity of our hypothesis, the difference between the hypothesized value and the actual value of sample statistic will be determined. Now, we have already one population parameter. Example, the population mean is 60. It is given. Now we want to confirm whether this population parameter 60 is true or not. We have taken a sample. Now we study the sample and calculate the sample mean. If the sample mean is also 60, then we can definitely say that population parameter of 60 is true. Because we have studied the sample, there is no difference, no significant difference between sample statistic and population parameter. Statistic and parameter both are one and the same. So we come to the conclusion that population parameter is 60. There is no difference at all. Now, if the difference between the hypothesized population parameter and the actual value is large, then we reject the hypothesis. If it is small, we should accept it. Now we compare the population parameter and sample statistic. If there is significant difference between statistic and parameter, then we reject. We reject the hypothesis. Suppose if the difference between population parameter and sample statistic is very small, then we accept the hypothesis. In this way, we come to the conclusion regarding hypothesis testing. Now, a statistical hypothesis is some assumption or statement which may or may not be true, which we want to test on the basis of the evidence provided by random sample. So, what is this hypothesis? A statistical hypothesis is some conclusion, some inference, some assumption which is available about the population. Now by taking a sample, we want to prove whether that assumption is true or not. Whether the assumption about population parameter is true or not by taking a study of the sample. That is called statistical hypothesis. That's all. Now next thing is level of significance. In testing a given hypothesis, the maximum probability with which we would be willing to risk type 1 error is called level of significance. In simple words, I can say the level of significance is the risk taken in giving the conclusion about the population parameter. About the population parameter. That means whatever conclusion we are giving on population hypothesis testing, that may be wrong. So what is the percentage we are taking the risk? Uh, naturally, always there is difference between population parameter and statistic, sample statistic, always. We cannot be 100% sure. Always there is risk attached because 
we are studying only a small sample and giving the opinion about the whole population. So how come that uh, our uh, conclusion always will be right? There is possibility of taking the risk. So how much risk you are taking in giving the conclusion about hypothesis? That risk is called level of significance. Type 1 error. The type 1 error means we are rejecting the hypothesis instead of accepting. Actually, the hypothesis should have been accepted. But by mistake, we have rejected the hypothesis. That is called type 1 error. So how much is the percentage of type 1 error? That is called level of significance. So this probability often denoted by alpha. This level of significance will be denoted by alpha. And is generally specified before the samples are drawn. So before, the ta before taking the samples, we should decide how much risk we are taking. Alpha is how much. Normally it will be taken at 5% or 1%. 5% risk or 1% risk. 5% risk means 5% our conclusion may go wrong. 95% our conclusion is right. When we say level of significance, 5%. When we say level of significance 1% means there are 1% chance that our conclusion may be wrong. 99% chances that our conclusion may be true. Right? So in practice the level of significance will be 0.05 or 0.01 is customary. We can take 92% or 98% like that. But customary normally we take the level of significance at 5% and 1%. If, for example, 5% level of significance is chosen, then there are 5 chances in 100 that will reject the hypothesis, when it should be accepted. When we take the level of significance as 5%, it means 5 cases out of 100, we may go wrong. That means we are rejecting the hypothesis instead of accepting it. That means we are doing a wrong decision. So what is the percentage of wrong decision? 5%. Then, that is, we are 95% confident that we have made the right decisions. So, when we have taken 95% level of significance, it means 95% we are confident that our decision is right. 5% chance or risk that our decision may be wrong. So, while doing the problem, this level of significance will be given in the problem. If it is not given, we will make the assumption of 5% or 1% that's it so in this video I have explained you about the sampling distribution the standard error statistical inferences that is point estimation interval estimation and then hypothesis testing what is hypothesis testing and lastly level of significance